What was the moment that you got into making? What is your maker origin story for this weird superpower that we have? Hey everybody, it's Joe. My friends at Flashforge have sent me the Flashforge Creator Max, but this is an unboxing video. I'm just pulling it out of the box and checking it out. I'm not gonna do a review on it. Instead, I have something else that I want to talk to you about. I listen to a podcast. I listen to several podcasts, as I think we all should. Uh, one of them is called the Making Geeks Podcast, and I hope you guys listen to it. If not, consider this a plug for them. But in episode 174, called We Like the Weird, Josh on the podcast brought up... Uh, <laughs> Well, the, the story that he was telling was, I think, different than the picture that it drew in my mind. The picture that it drew in my mind was one of a superhero's story. A hero's journey, but a superhero's journey. Let me explain a little bit. Ta -da. So Josh posited that what we do as makers is not anything normal or easy. It is in fact weird. And being something weird, it makes us special. It is in a very real way, our superpower. And a lot of us with this superpower has an origin story. That moment that we discovered this strange propensity for, for making things and fixing things and looking at the world in a different way and realizing that we could shape it and that we could have that, that power that we have, have real positive impact in the world. And that empowering feeling opening up to us a whole world of possibilities. Now, I don't know what your point of origin is. I don't know what your origin story is, but for me, it was the time that, well, I had heard about 3D printers and it just kind of clicked with me. I got the idea almost immediately, but, uh, but I couldn't afford one. I had a family and even $800, at the time, the RepRap project said $800, you can get all the parts that you need and you can build your own 3D printer. But I, I kind of knew in the back of my head that that meant that I was going to be spending a lot of time on this machine. And I just, I just wanted to use the machine to make cool things. But the idea of designing in 3D and having that turn into a real thing made perfect sense to me. And I had already designed in 3D. In fact, I had trained at one point in my life to be a computer animator. And I said, well... I've got design skills. Why don't I start designing for these 3D printers that I, I think are so cool? And, uh, you know, I'll get one one day. I designed a Chinese chess set, except if you know Chinese chess, they're little discs with Chinese characters on them. And that's, that's kind of scary to people who don't speak Chinese. So I wanted to make a set that had icons on them, familiar icons, pawns and horses and things like that that would correspond to the pieces in Chinese chess. I uploaded this on Thingiverse, and of course this was way back when Thingiverse was, you know, brand new and not both exploding and imploding at the same time. And uh, somebody in, ooh, where was it, Massachusetts, I think, contacted me and said, dude, I love Chinese chess. I'm gonna 3D print this Chinese chess set of yours. And I said, well, could you 3D print me one? And he did. And, when it arrived and when I held it in my hands and, and actually looked at something that I had designed but that a machine had made real, I was done for. I was going to be into this thing forever and there was never not going to be a time in my life when I wasn't into 3D printing. It was, it was that moment of transformation for me. Of course, it took a while before I got my first 3D printer, but... I, I can identify that as the moment when this whole thing started for me.
Now, along with this newfound power, there oftentimes comes a new identity. I don't know why, but so many of us, when we get into 3D printing, we immediately think we need to start building a brand. I mean, my father didn't build a brand for, for the stuff that he did in his shop. My grandfather didn't build a brand for the stuff that he did in his wood shop. But for some reason, when we get into making, when we get into electronics, when we get into all these things, we think we need a brand. I don't know why. Personally, I've gone through three different brands. Originally, it was Joe's MakerBot, then Joe's 3D Workbench, and now I'm just a 3D printing professor. I think I've fully embraced a brand. And like I said, as a superhero story, this fits into the, the mythos of, you know, creating a new identity. Although most superheroes do it, you know, to protect the ones that they love. Whereas we do it, I don't know why we do it, but we do it. And this happens to a lot of us. Now, one thing that I loved about what Josh brought up was that for some people, this could be, he didn't bring it up this way, but this could be something that makes them think they're better than other people. I've got this superpower and therefore other people aren't equal to me. But for him, that's not what happened. For him, he looked at everybody because I, I think it's because this superpower is one that we choose ourselves. And he looks at everybody now and says, what's their superpower? Are they into woodworking? Are they into 3D printing? Are they into electronics? That old lady walking down the street, pushing a stroller. Stroller, why would an old lady be pushing a stroller? Weird visual, but you get my idea. That person that you've never met, what's their superpower? Are they into knitting or sewing? Do they do amazing work with needlecraft or whatever? What is their superpower? This, instead of being a dividing idea, an idea that he says, well, I'm better than everybody else, has instead been a unifying one for him. And he's saying, I want to know what everybody's superpower is. Oh, I think I figured this out. One roll of filament for two extruders. Hmm. Now, the funny thing was, I brought this up recently in a conversation to Barb from Barb Makes Things. I did that on my 3D Printing Professor live channel, which if you're not subscribed to, go check it out. I'm gonna be doing other videos on that channel and uh, it's, I wanted to separate it out from this channel so the live content will be there. So be sure to subscribe and ring that bell and do all those things. But when I, when I brought this up to Barb, she said, yeah, not really for me. This sounds like a guy thing. And it might very well be. It's interesting to me that I, I'm glad I brought this up to her because she brought me a different perspective that this, this experience that I had, that Josh had, and that many people on that podcast had, is not a universal experience. That some people, they're just raised in a making environment and they, they realize that they can make and so that's what they do. And that's great, that's fine. I'm glad that Barb gave me that perspective. But for me, it definitely feels like I had that moment where it's dangerous to go alone, take this, and I realized that I could change the world. The call to action came in and I took it. So I really enjoyed that. However, as a superpower goes, one thing that we keep hearing with superheroes and, and superpowers is that with great power comes, you know, the rest. The, the point of this is that with this superpower, when we realize that we can change the world with what we're doing, we have to recognize that we need to use this power carefully and responsibly. We can't just go off Helter Skelter. And during this time, right now, with everything that's going on in the world, a lot of people are thinking, yeah, I've got the power to do something about this. And they're jumping in and doing things. And there's a chance that what they're doing is a bad idea. Not everything. A lot of the things that we're doing 
are really good, but it's important that we keep our heads about our superpowers or we may end up uh, with an incredible scenario on our hand. You know what I mean, thinking that you're doing good, but in the end you're actually helping somebody who doesn't want to be helped. And so be careful with your superpower. Use it only for good and not just good intentions, but if you're venturing into a field that is outside of your knowledge and experience, defer to the people who have that knowledge and experience. Use their knowledge to help guide what you do. It's true, making, whether it's electronics, 3D printing, whether it's just needleworking, sewing, right? Sewing right now is an amazing superpower to have. And I have seen so many people use their 3D printers and their sewing and their other making talents during this time. You know, one of the coolest ones, I mean, yes, there's people 3D printing masks and face shields and things like that. But the one that I love that I was told about is 3D printing a part to... I can't remember the name of it, so somebody's going to be yelling it once I describe it. It pulls in a, a ribbon of fabric and then folds it over on itself so that you can iron it and turn it into the straps that go behind your masks and things like that. There is a specific tool for that, and they're all sold out right now because everybody's making masks, but we can 3D print them. So if you need one or if anybody in your area needs one, you can print off a set of them, donate them to them, and people can be making masks with this 3D printed sewing tool. What an amazing synergy of making technology. I absolutely love this story. It's, it's beautiful, and it's just one of the many wonderful stories that are happening. But at the same time, like I said, we got to be careful. We got to move forward. And if we think that we've got a great idea, vet it with people who are smarter than you are, who can say, well, you're forgetting something and you're not thinking about something and, and you're making a short-sighted choice. And sometimes we make short-sighted choices, especially in an emergency. We do things because it's what needs to be done at the time. We need to recognize that's what we're doing. We're not... Uh, we're not saving the world if we're not actually helping people. We, this is one of the rare cases where we could actually be doing more harm than good. But I think mostly a lot of people are doing a lot of good with their making superpowers. Well, that's all I wanted to say about that subject, but I would like to hear about your hero's journey and when you realized that you could do something that made you different made you special and what you've done with it when was your call to action what tell me all about it in the comments i can't wait to hear from it thanks very much before we go check out this cool project on the what you making channel on my discord why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there and hey if you share something you've done Maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. Ooh, I like what I'm seeing. But can I get it out without breaking?